God can change even you. God can forgive you of every sin you have ever committed because the Bible says with God all things are possible. Here's what the Bible says. God will take your sin and throw it into the deepest part of the sea. He'll take our iniquities and cast them into the depths of the ocean and then God promises your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Isn't that good news? God will forgive your sin. He'll forget your sin. Listen, we should not choose to remember what God has chosen to forget. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all sinned. We never do know the depths of the love of God and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God. It's hard for us to grasp it. The scripture says in Numbers 14, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. In 2 Chronicles 30, it says, the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you turn to him. If, if you turn to him. Thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous of mercy unto all them that call upon thee. If you call upon him, he will forgive. If you repent, he will forgive. If you turn to Christ and trust only in the cross and the blood of Christ, he will forgive. And God's forgiveness goes a lot further than yours and mine. We say, oh yes, I forgive you. God calls it justification, just as though you had never sinned. You are placed in the sight of God as though you'd never committed a single sin. And the scripture says he cannot even remember your sins. He erases the tapes. They're all erased. He can't remember them. When the thief on the cross who was a murderer and a robber prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. At that one moment, God, for Christ forgave him and took him to paradise with him. He didn't have time to be baptized. He didn't have time to do any good works. He had time for nothing except just trust in Christ. And that's what you need to do. Put your whole trust in him. And that's what faith means. Faith means commitment. We commit our lives to him. Ask for forgiveness. There are so many promises in the Bible about forgiveness. First John 1, 9 is the most famous one. If we admit, if we freely admit that we have sinned, we find God utterly Reliable. Notice it doesn't say, if we freely admit we've sinned, we find God utterly punishing, utterly mad, utterly angry. It doesn't say that. It says when we admit to God we've sinned, that makes God happy, not sad. A lot of people think, well, I admit to God, God's going to be mad at me, as if he doesn't already know. No, he knows. He just wants you to admit that you know and you recognize that was wrong. God is more willing to forgive you than you're willing to admit it. You don't have to bribe or bargain or beg God. You don't bribe and, and, and say, God, if you'll forgive me, then uh, I'll do this good, good work. You don't bargain. God, if you forgive me, I'll never do it again. God said, yeah, you're right. Forgiveness does not change the future. It clears up the past. But you don't beg, you don't need to. God wants to forgive you. You don't bargain, I'll never do it again. You don't bribe, well, God, I promise I'll tithe 20%. No, just, just ask. Romans 3, 23 and 24 says this. All of us have sinned, yet God declares us not guilty. If we trust in Jesus Christ, who in his mercy freely, circle the word freely, freely, you don't have to bargain, bribe, beg. Freely takes away all our sins. Now, notice it says, if you just trust, if we just trust in Jesus Christ. He said, but Rick, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. I don't need to know what you've done. I could tell you this. What matters is what Jesus has done for you. That's what the cross is all about. We said that when we look at the cross, Jesus hangs on the cross, and the first thing he says is, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
So the first message of good news, the first word of love from the cross is the word of forgiveness. And when you come to God humbly, honestly, admitting, accepting, and asking, God says, Father, forgive them. They don't know, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He, he comes, his immediate response is forgiveness. Now, you may be saying, you know, I've done that, Rick. I've asked God over and over and over to forgive me, but I don't feel forgiven. Well, let me just say a couple things. You don't have to ask over and over and over and over and over. When you ask over and over and over, you're acting like God didn't hear you the first time. When you ask over and over and over, you're saying, I don't really believe you forgave me. I don't really believe you forgave me, so I'm going to ask again. Because I haven't forgiven myself, I'm going to ask again. That's false guilt from Satan. Now, let me explain how this works. Before I commit a sin, Satan minimizes it. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Go ahead and do it. Everybody does it. It's no big deal. Go ahead and do it. That's minimizing. The moment I do it, Satan changes strategies and he maximizes it. That is so big, you will never have the blessing of God in your life again. See how he works? It's the exact opposite. Before you do it, it's no big deal. And he just maximizes it afterwards. If you keep asking over and over, that's a lack of faith. You don't really believe God forgave you. So what does Jesus do when we do it his way and ask forgiveness for sin? We ask, we, we accept, and we admit. Number one, he forgives instantly. Instantly. You don't have to suffer a little while first. He never makes you wait. He doesn't say, I'll think about it. The moment you ask, zero delay. Should a believer ever feel guilty for sin? Yeah, about 10 seconds. That's about how long it takes to confess and receive forgiveness from God. The myth is that feeling guilty makes me a better person. It does not. Feeling guilty does not make you a better person. God doesn't want you walking around in guilt. It just makes you miserable. It's unnecessary for holiness. Number two, God forgives completely. He forgives completely. He's not just quick and merciful to forgive. When Jesus died for your sins, which ones did he include on the cross? Every one of them. Even the ones you haven't committed yet have already been paid for on the cross. He died for all of them. And when he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, it included everything you ever have and ever will do wrong. Jesus was nailed, Jesus nailed himself to a cross so you can stop nailing yourself to a cross. Colossians 2. He has forgiven all your sins. Circle all. He has utterly wiped out. Circle that. The evidence of broken commandments which always hung over our heads. He has completely, circle that, completely annulled it by nailing it to the cross. It is a super stain remover. Completely annulled. What does that mean? It means as if it never happened. How long do you remember a paid bill? You don't. And if God forgives, and not only forgives, but forgets sin, shouldn't you? The problem is if you don't understand complete forgiveness, every time something bad happens in your life, you're going to think, God's punishing me for what I did. He doesn't work that way. He doesn't work that way. Number three, God forgives repeatedly. God forgives repeatedly. Have you ever committed the same sin more than once? Yes. Then do you feel embarrassed to ask for forgiveness again the next time? Yeah. You go, oh, I can't come back to God on this one. I just confessed it five minutes ago. God does not get bored with your confessions. It is God's nature to be forgiven. Hebrews 7:25. Christ is always interceding on our behalf. He forgives repeatedly over and over and over. He doesn't get embarrassed. You don't need to. And number four, God forgives freely. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's a gift of God's grace. Because you are human, forgiveness is your greatest need. And because Christ died for you, forgiveness is God's greatest gift. So let me just say this. Have you been haunted by secret sin? you can be set free.